The Inter-Service Intelligence, also known as the ISI for short, was formed on January 1st, 1948. The agency is made up of military officers and personnel from Pakistan's armed forces. Pakistan's powerful intelligence agency ISI is among the most active intelligence enterprise and covered direct action forces in the world. It is part of the Pakistani army, but it operates generally beyond the control of the Pakistani government as a whole. Thanks for joining me here on another episode of FD Facts. I'm Leroy Kenton, and now by far this past week, this was the most requested topic. I mean, like everybody wants to know about the ISI. Mustanir Ahmed requested it, Zuhaib Mohammed as well, Salman Saeed, and then we have Khalid Al Baloshi, and then we have Minahal Salim, and not to mention a bunch of other people. So let's begin with the facts. The American Crime News declared Pakistan's inter-service intelligence to be the world's best and strongest intelligence intelligence agency back in 2011. The ISI headquarters is located in Islamabad, Pakistan, and its main focus is to protect Pakistan's national interests, as well as look into matters of political and social interest to Pakistan, and advise the military in the best steps to take. Now, over the years, the ISI has stopped many terror-related attacks well before they were even executed. The ISI is also the largest intelligence agency in the world. The ISI has close to 10,000 agents in the field world wide, ironically, it's one of the least funded agencies in the world. It's above all laws in its home country of Pakistan, and it's often referred to as a state within a state because its policies are made outside of all the other institutions with the exception of the army. Now, I want to talk a little bit about Operation Cyclone. If you're not familiar, it was a code name given to an operation between the American CIA and the Pakistani ISI beginning in 1979 and ending in 1989. But that was the U.S. plan, a trap, codenamed Operation Cyclone, funded by the CIA and designed to draw the USSR into an expensive and distracting Vietnam-like war. Now, the objective of this mission was to stop the invasion of the USSR forces into Afghanistan by providing support to the Mujahideen fighters in Afghanistan. Now, it was one of the most expensive CIA operations that it has ever undertaken, and it cost them roughly 20 to 30 million dollars US every single year, but that was up until 1980. And by the time they reached 1987, it rose to $630 million a year. It's also reported that no ISI agent has ever been caught or turned. Although this has never been verified, the Pakistani government has not yet taken responsibility for any alleged undercover agent that was caught on foreign soil. There are stories of officials like squadron leader Khalid Kawaja that were arrested on Pakistani soil for conspiracy against the state, but it seems like the ISI has been very good at insulating themselves from any direct involvement in any of the covert operations that they have supposedly orchestrated. If this is true, that's very impressive. The ISI have also played very crucial roles in arresting members of Al-Qaeda as well as the Taliban. Even though most Western TV shows and movies show the ISI in some kind of negative light, where they're possibly shown collaborating with terrorists, the ISI actually have worked very close with the CIA in bringing down crucial targets and officials of the Taliban and the Al-Qaeda all across the world. The ISI is a very professional organization in my experience over the years. I have a lot of respect for them. And I also think it's only in Western minds, and in especially American minds, that you can expect an intelligence service of a foreign country to do something counter to its own interests, to its country's interests. While there are sources that link ongoing relations between the terrorist organizations and the ISI, the Pakistani intelligence service has played a very crucial role in the capture of very prominent agitators like Ramzi Youssef, Abdul Ghani Baradar, Ahmed Omar, Saeed Sheikh, and many more. Pakistani security forces captured one of Osama bin Laden's chief lieutenants, Abu Zabaida, along with 19 other al-Qaeda operatives in the eastern Pakistani city of Faisalabad. The ISI arrested September 11 mastermind Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. Going further, the ISI and the Pakistani military have worked effectively with the United States to continue pursuing the remnants of al-Qaeda, and following 9-11, Pakistan stationed 80,000 troops in the troubled province of Waziristan near the Afghan border in order to help break the back of the Al-Qaeda network. 
Now, as I mentioned earlier in this episode that the ISI have close to 10,000 members. And I say that because the official number hasn't been confirmed. But what is known about the ISI is that they do recruit from Pakistan's military, as well as they recruit civilians and put them through a lot of rigorous training. The training seems to be very secretive because there's very little information and details about it. But what we do know is that the agents are trained in covert intelligence gathering and counterintelligence. Again, I mentioned that the headquarters of the ISI is located in Islamabad, Pakistan, and the complex consists of various low-rising buildings separated by lawns and fountains. Declan Walsh, a journalist at The Guardian, he says that the entrance is suitably discreet, no sign, just a plainclothes officer packing a pistol. Walsh also said that the complex resembles a well-funded private university and that the buildings are neatly tended. Moving on now to Operation Tupac. Yeah, you heard that correctly, but it has nothing to do with the American rapper. June 16th, 1971, Mama gave birth to a hell-raising heavenly son. Operation Tupac was the name of a three-part operation that was designed to secretly support the militants of Kashmir. It was partly started by Pakistan's president Zia ul Haq back in 1988, and the name comes from Tupac Amuru II, which is the 18th century prince who led the War of Liberation in Peru against the Spanish rule. The ISI is currently engaged in covertly supporting the Kashmiri militants in their fight against the Indian authorities in Kashmir. This is because the militants in Kashmir are fighting to be independent from India and become part of Pakistan. Of course, for Pakistan, the overwhelming obsession is India. Another thing I want to highlight is the Kargil War. The Kargil War was back in 1999. The line of control between India and Pakistan is probably one of the most inhospitable places in the world. There is an unwritten agreement that during the winter, neither force will occupy the border's posts. The ISI broke this agreement in the winter of 1998 to 1999, which led to the Kargil War in the following summer. Although Pakistan is considered to have lost this war, the war is also considered a victory for the ISI as it caught RAW, its Indian counterpart, completely off guard. India had no clue about the infiltration until they were informed about an unknown strangers occupying Indian posts. Now we're coming down close to the end, let's talk about Mullah Muhammad Umar Mujahid. He was a top Taliban leader and it's an open secret now that he was trained by the ISI. A captured Taliban spokesman by the name of Mohammed Hanif told the Afghan authorities back in January of 2007 that Omar was protected by the ISI in the city of Quetta in Pakistan. By November of 2009, the Washington Times were claiming that Omar had been helped by the ISI and that he was now in Karachi. It was only in January of 2010 that Amir Sultan Tarar, who was a retired official and ISI agent, said that Omar was ready to break with his Al-Qaeda allies and make peace with Afghanistan. And finally, let's talk about nuclear tests. Although it's never been proven for sure, but it's said that the Indian RAW as well as the Israeli Mossad flew over Pakistan's nuclear test facilities in order to gather information, but they were unable to do that because the ISI planned to keep its nuclear facilities secret and even change the location of its test sites multiple times to keep away anybody from seeing anything. They finally settled in the Pakistani city of Chagi and in ensure the security of the nuclear equipment by guarding the transport plane with six F-16 fighter jets. So it's unclear what sort of nuclear tests have been going on, but that's just how the ISI rolls. People don't necessarily know exactly what they're up to. Now that concludes this episode about the ISI. Thank you guys so much for bringing it to my attention. I learned a lot during this video. This episode of FTD Facts is brought to you by Grammarly.com. Grammarly is one of the world's leading softwares in improving your written English. You can join the tens of thousands of people all around the world that have started using Grammarly. I have the link down below in this video description where you can install it for free. And if you want even more features, go ahead and purchase the upgrade. And as you guys continue to support our sponsors like Grammarly.com, you continue to make these videos possible. Because of the nature of this episode, no doubt that YouTube will remove monetization. So we would pretty much be producing a video for free. And obviously here at FTD Facts, we do have overhead and production costs. So again, the link to Grammarly.com is down below. You can install it for free and as well you can also purchase the upgrade for even more features. 
Be sure to leave a thumbs up if you enjoy these videos that we do for you each and every single week. And don't forget to come back here every single day, Monday to Friday, for new episodes. And for those of you who made it this far in this episode, you can check out some more of our videos on Pakistan. We also have videos about different people and places all around the world, so you can check those out as well.